κύριε Πρόεδρε τη Νέα Δημοκρατία, κύριε Πρόεδρε τη BIMCO, κύριε Εκπρόσωποι του Λιμενικού Σώματο, esteemed guests, ladies and gentlemen, that's all the Greek you're getting from me today. Good morning. In market fundamentals we trust. A catchy slogan. But why? Is it because the conference overview points out one feels encouraged seeing the shipping markets getting back to basics? We're currently witnessing an acceleration in the evolution of the maritime transportation industry. Innovative ship design, new types and sizes, radical digitalization of documentation and propulsion systems, the demise of the fossil fuels, the acceptance of alternative power sources, eco-friendly equipment and procedures, sophisticated maritime education and training, vastly improved labor conditions, and high-tech ship management systems. Traditional commodity destinations are changing, not to mention novel cargo handling methods at new ports and terminals. Not an extensive list, but just a few prime examples. Finance of shipping is not by any means an exception. Until the turn of this century, finance for shipping was traditionally provided by commercial shipping banks. We all know them. However, driven by the euphoria of the good freight market just over 10 years ago, many financiers honestly believed that this would be the norm. The market will never go back to where it was. Famous last words. Greed, ladies and gentlemen, one of the seven deadly sins, took a hold of too many irresponsible finance providers. Throwing caution to the wind, banks competed between themselves on who had the biggest shipping portfolio. When finance through traditional shipping banks could not keep up with the unprecedented growth of the world fleet, it was seamlessly replaced to a large extent by finance through public money relentless institutional funds and eager equity partners, all who knew the fluctuations in the shipping market. Here lies the dichotomy. The traditional ship owner buys at the bottom of the market to get a cheap asset when the cash flow is usually negative, whereas the institutional investor buys at the top of the market when the asset is expensive but the cash flow is positive. Does this fundamental change in the source of funding shout out the end of the traditional relationship between the banking world and the shipping community? An impressive fleet, a sound financial performance that not, does not necessarily reduce the risk of lending money. One may make substantial financial gains being a wise asset player. But being a good shipping manager requires a good knowledge of all the aspects of shipping. And there are many. Decisiveness, devotion to duty, communication skills, and the ability to judge when to risk and when to act conservatively. Knowing when to show patience or when to grab the risky opportunity. However, as we all can see, we are victims of our own success. The freight market grew stronger and the money became more abundant and cheaper, so obviously we built more and more ships. Until we went a ship too far, and the euphoric shipping bubble burst. Not only did world trade shrink, but we ended up with an oversupply of tonnage. This disaster was further complicated by banks introducing stricter criteria to prevent money laundering, better methods for know your client, and far more stringent criteria for the approval of shipping loans. Today, the approval and terms of any loan, including shipping loans, are the result of a mechanical process dictated by financial models. Yields and short-term returns are all that count. Regrettably, it appears that the human relationship an understanding between bankers and ship owners is anachronism. Long-lasting friendships of old are being replaced by 
connections through social media. So how does, do shipping financiers evaluate these modern times with a client where the client is replaced by a balance sheet projection? However the picture of this market appears in the future, the basics that I believe should be adopted are trust between the lender and the client, risk assessment based on the managerial skills and the historical fleet performance, efficiency and devotion to the aim of transporting cargo safely, punctually, and without damage. I say should because it is paramount for an industry which is instrumental to world prosperity. Let us not forget that almost 90% of world trade travels by sea. Indeed, the shipping markets are now improving with some small hiccups at the moment. And hopefully they will continue to do so enough to justify our investments. But let us hope that we have all learnt our lesson, both finances and ship owners, and that we don't get carried away with an Opel Vaults policy that will encourage indiscriminate shipbuilding just for the sake of making use of the available funding. Let us hope that short-term memory loss is fundamentally curable. On behalf of the Hellenic Chamber of Shipping, I wish every success to this conference, and thank you very much for your time.